So if you look at the historic value of aspirin, um, we had tons of information on how the aspirin would be working in the secondary prevention. With secondary, we mean if someone already had an event. And we had tons of data. And we kind of extrapolated that data into the primary prevention, along with some of the studies which were not as robust as they should have been. And we kind of suggested that we would want to use aspirin as a primary prevention as well as secondary prevention. And there are guidelines to help us decide when we want to use aspirin in the primary prevention for prevention of cardiovascular disease as well as other mortality issues related to diabetes and other chronic diseases. Current guidelines actually uh, uh, are suggestive of using aspirin in primary prevention based on the data that we already have. And the data suggests that if your cardiovascular disease uh, risk is above certain percentage, you would want to use aspirin as a primary. And obviously, if you had a primary event already, for secondary prevention, you would use it. Like ADA recommends using aspirin in diabetes if your age is above 55, because that's a cutoff that we usually see that um, cardiovascular risk is high enough that you would want to use aspirin. And same is true with other chronic diseases too, that if you already have high blood pressure and dyslipidemia, you would want to use aspirin in primary prevention after a certain age. Interestingly enough, in the last uh, uh, few months, uh, there are quite a few robust studies which have come out. And I'll start off with the first trial, which was a SENT trial, which was done on 15,000 individuals. Um, it, was look, it was looking into primary cardiovascular uh, uh, events as well as stroke event and the bleeding event. And the data actually did not turn out to be as robust as we wish, would, we wish it would turn out to be. The reason is that um, um, in, in, in this study, we looked at there was some prevention of the primary um, outcome, which was um, cardiovascular risk and cardiovascular event, although um, the bleeding was not as significantly noted in it. But the um, already known side of as aspirin, which we already knew, uh, came out even more robust in this one. And what I mean by that, there was a more incidence of um, B, uh, GI bleed, there was more risk of other major bleed, including the site affecting bleeds as well. So that kind of led to this study being more um, of a study which, in which we cannot outweigh the benefits um, with, the, uh, with the side effects. So the side effect offset the benefit of it. Then came um, the ARRIVE study, which was actually done in moderately risk cardiovascular disease patient, and we looked at the primary prevention um, data in this study. Again, published in a, um, in a journal, showed there was, there was no clear cut benefit in primary prevention. And again, the last but not the least, and exactly the more uh, stronger study came up uh, with the uh, ASPIRE study, which was also published in the New England Journal, which showed that in 20,000 people, in older age group, which was 70 above in Australia, and 65, above, 65 and above um, with Hispanic and African American, um, the data showed that there was not only no benefit in primary prevention, but there was also um, no benefit in dementia and other outcomes based on older people. The third um, disadvantage of this came out was increased risk of bleed. So there was clear cut more risk of bleeding with aspirin, there was more GI bleed, and there was more um, eye limiting, vision limiting uh, bleed as well. And there was also a signal of increased mortality in this study, which showed that um, there was increased risk and majorly cancer related deaths in the people taking aspirin although too early to say that this is a, comp a, a link between the aspirin and the cancer-related risk, risk. But um, if you look at the study, all these studies give you a three strike for possibly the rethinking when we use aspirin, especially in the primary prevention of our patients. All these studies and the new data that we have um, it warns us in, in using aspirin in the primary prevention. But this should not go out as a message 
that anyone and everyone who's using aspirin should stop taking aspirin. And this message is very loud and clear. It does have a role in the secondary prevention. And in primary prevention, if you're looking at the data and the new studies, um, you'll have to talk to your doctor. If you are a physician taking aspirin, you need to talk to your um, doctor to decide if you want to continue the aspirin as a primary prevention. Because you can, if you have a cardiovascular disease of five to 10%, maybe that's a time that you would want to stop. But if your already cardiovascular risk is above 20%, um, you need to talk to your doctor and probably you would want to continue because at that time, the risk of prevention, the risk of side effects actually outweigh the benefit. So that if your risk is more than 20% of cardiovascular disease, probably that's a time that you would want to continue aspirin because the side effects do not play that major of a role um, in this situation because your cardiovascular risk is high. Future of antiplatelet therapy after looking at these major trials which were published which were based out of um, 15,000 the first, 13,000 and the fourth one done on a 20,000 patient population do give us a um, signal that use of aspirin and antiplatelet therapy should be um, considered as a um, sidelined as we have developed so many other ways of preventing cardiovascular including the um, management of blood pressure including the um, uh, cholesterol medication and if you look at these three studies all of these actually in all uh, in all these um, patient population we actually overestimated the risk of cardiovascular disease and the studies showed a lesser events rate in um, as compared to what was expected out of these studies so we are doing a wonderful job um, if I may so, or if at least we are doing um, somewhat of a better job what we used to do at this time to prevent the cardiovascular disease. We can do a lot better, we need to work a little better, but I think um, aspirin is not the mainstay of treatment in primary pre prevention in our diabetic and high risk patient at this time. So my message to the doctors prescribing uh, would be that we should be careful in uh, prescribing aspirin without looking at the side effects of aspirin which include bleeding and visual uh, effects due to bleeding in these individuals and if I'm a patient taking aspirin I would not want to stop the aspirin right away I would go back to your doctor and discuss what are your risk of developing these uh, these bleeding episodes or having an incidence of bleeding and what are your chances of developing a cardiovascular disease these two things you have to discuss with your um, with your doctor before you think of discontinuing the medication uh, which is aspirin along with the other steps that you need to take to prevent the cardiovascular disease.